Well, I think the the sort of big standout is uh, the government is loosening the purse strings. Um, I think they've finally realised, acknowledged that they've brought our public services to their knees and that they need to start investing. Um, it sounds like they're throwing out big numbers. You can do that if you're doing a one-year spending round rather than a full spending review. Um, but actually, even the numbers that they're throwing around um, don't go to the level they need to in order to reverse the cuts, in order to properly um, end austerity. Um, so you you know, if I take some of the analysis that we've done, you just take his sort of people's priorities, health, um, social care, education, uh, where together they sort of totted it up at about 10 billion. Well, you know, our view is actually to invest properly to get us up to the level that we need is about 30 billion a year. So they've sort of provided about a third of that. On those three areas. On those three about. areas. So Social care wasn't mentioned explicitly. Well, he talked about about a billion um, that's been provided by social care. Um, and so... Again, uh, they, they will talk about the rhetoric of ending austerity, but we're not there. And for me, the really, really big piece is that all of this is being done in the context of a government that has this reckless policy that it wants to hurtle towards no deal, which remember what the government's economic watchdog said the last time. It is likely to tip us into recession against a really perilous economic backdrop, but also will cost us 30 billion a year and make much of this null and void. So the big question for me... Make the spending impossible. Yeah, well, so the big question is whether these promises are actually worth the paper they're written on. This spending review, almost anything that comes out of the mouths of senior government figures at the moment has to be seen in the context text of the coming general election. Now, whenever it comes, um, it's, it's looking pretty imminent. Um, it, has the government stolen a march, do you think, Miata, on Labour here? Because they, are, they have crystallised and condensed their message on Brexit and they're announcing these figures. And yes, they can always be, you know, you can always take a, a knife to figures and argue the toss of those. But they're ahead, they're ahead of the game that they themselves are playing, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, in some respects, they were the ones setting the terms. So it kind of feels like we were always moving towards a general election before the end of the year. Um, and so they are playing it in the way that they sort of anticipated they would do. Um, I mean, on Brexit, uh, yes, they have a clear position, but that position is a no deal Brexit, you know, a deal do or die, no deal. Um, and I think the two challenges are it's not sh clear to me that there is a majority in the country that actually buys that message and wants to leave on a no deal basis. But it's quite hard to then square that up against the other part of the story they're telling, which is we're a government that cares about you. We know times have been tough and we're trying to spend because what everyone will say, not just the experts, but the, you know, the opposition parties will be like, it doesn't stack up. You can't on the one hand be saying we're about to be thrown off the cliff that your own economic watchdog says will lead us to recession, will cost us money, and then in the same breath be saying that you can spend what they've talked about, 13.8 billion in one year, because we all know that this is going downhill. So I think it makes it quite hard for them to square that message when sh shove comes to push. We're not starting from a benign position. So communities have already been under pressure for a decade. We've had wage stagnation for a decade. And yes, wages are going up, but they still haven't recovered from the position they were in in 2010. So out there, people have been hugely squeezed. That's the context in which you want to tip us into recession. The resilience of communities to cope with that, the resilience of families to cope with that is just not there. And that's why it is so reckless at this time. But won't, won't Labour, you know, we talk about who's shot, who's fox and mm. who's stolen a march on whom it, it in the general election campaign to come it's actually quite well i suppose it depends on who your audience is but it, it it's a fairly uh, easy and oftentimes true narrative to be able to say uh, well well now you're spending look at this community now you're spending look at this old person who has no social care now you're spending look at this i mean a general election events in a general election can change things very rapidly think jennifer's ear think Absolutely. Think Blair being stopped by the wife of a cancer patient on the way out of the hospital. Yeah. Know, things can change. And and it, it isn't as simple. I mean, clearly Boris Johnson is trying to deliver a kind of, right, clarity on Brexit, clarity on spending. The good times are, are just around the corner. But it's a lot more complex than that on austerity because austerity, I take what you said about, yeah. about the public finances, but austerity was a choice. Absolutely. And I mean, and I think it's two things. It's, it's partly look at what they've done for 10 years uh, versus what they're saying. And can you trust them? We've only had a spending bonanza for one year. 
What happens after? Um, and so I think it's actually quite hard for them to land. I think the other part of the story is spending is only part of the equation. There is a big reform agenda. So, you know, the thing that our organisation talks about is the fact that we need kind of big structural reform in our economy in order to lift people's living standards, improve their well-being, to tackle productivity, tackle wage stagnation, the housing crisis, the climate emergency. Lord O'Neill thinks that productivity, our lack of it, our problems with it, is a much bigger problem than anything Brexit can throw at us. Is this announcement today uh, sufficient to win an election? And and will the general election, I mean, it's a hard one to predict, but Theresa May thought the general election in 2017 could be just about Brexit. Um, Boris Johnson, I guess, is banking on the same. Um, I, I wonder, will it be? I think that the spending round um, gives them a story, but it's not enough. Because in the end, the thing that sits beyond Brexit, the thing that is the fundamental problem in the country is the fact that for huge amounts of the population, they have not benefited from the economy doing well. So we've seen growth, but the majority of people haven't benefited. And until you can fix that, or you have a story about how you can fix that, I don't think you will cut through. So yes, they're talking about splurging more money for one year, good, they need to do that, and they need to rectify some of the problems that they've created in the past. But what is your story for how you change the economy so that it works for everyone, to choose Theresa May's mantra?